today's tutorial actually we have problem 19 onwards that is lumped capacitance transient conduction three problems are there we want all of you to solve these three problems properly we will also solve one by one let us see how far we can get okay problem number 19, 19. the heat transfer coefficient for air flowing over a sphere is to be determined by observing the temperature time history of a sphere fabricated from pure copper. The sphere which is 12.7 mm diameter, so the diameter of the sphere is 12.7 mm, is at 66 degree Celsius before it is inserted into an air stream that is T i is 66 and having a temperature into an air stream having a temperature of 27 degree Celsius that is T infinity equal to 27 degree Celsius. A thermocouple on the outer surface of the sphere indicates 55 degree Celsius 69 seconds after the sphere is inserted in the air stream that is T equal to 69 T final equal to 55 degree Celsius. Assume and then justify that the sphere behaves as a space wise isothermal object that is space wise isothermal means lumped that means it is not going to vary the temperature in terms of space and calculate the heat transfer coefficient. The material properties given are K equal to 398 watt per meter Kelvin, Cp equal to 389 joule per kg Kelvin, rho equal to 8933 kg per meter cube. The moment you see copper by and large you can expect to be lumped, but not always. So, first thing is, first thing is we need to get the bio number. Bio number we cannot get directly, we need to get the heat transfer coefficient. Based on what information? That is T final and temperature given. Using that, you can get the heat transfer coefficient. Let us calculate, I will give you the mathematic experimental implication of this little later on. So, that is T f minus T infinity upon T i minus T infinity equal to exponential of minus H a s upon rho V c p T. So, 55 minus 27 upon 66 minus 27 equal to exponential of H, H I do not know into a s by a s by v a s by v is 6 by d 6 6 6 exponential of or first let us find out time constant minus t by tau okay t is 69 so, if I press the calculator for this, I am going to get tau equal to 208 seconds. You see it is quite high compared to our 4.52 seconds because that was 0.7 mm diameter, this is almost half inch, 12.7 mm diameter, it is exactly half inch. So, that is why it is taking more time. Now, tau equal to, tau equal to rho V C P upon H A S. So, implies 208 equal to yeah, V by A S is D by 6. So, tau equal to 208, okay. H equal to 6 into 208 upon rho is 8933 into diameter is 12.7 into 10 to the power of minus 3 into C P is 389. So, I get a h of 35.3 watt per meter squared Kelvin. See the beauty of this problem. What is so beautiful in this problem? You see we can measure the heat transfer coefficient using this method. Now, you can understand when I say heat transfer coefficient much better because we have completed convection. I did not deal this because of this tutorial problem in yesterday's presentation. If I had told you can measure h you would have not understood. So, I had postponed this. The main reason for choosing this problem is to explain that 
this technique can be used for measuring the heat transfer coefficient. Now, I said that this B, this sphere is put in a air stream. So, I can have a velocity of that air stream for a given velocity, for a given fluid that is air, I can measure the heat transfer coefficient. That is only thing I need to know is the time logging, time logging. So, that is the beauty. This is how we can measure the heat transfer coefficient using simple lumped transient conduction analysis. Okay. In fact, anyway, the same thing is there in our experimental portion also. Okay. Someone was asking me in the chat that where is the video for measuring the heat transfer coefficient? It is very much there in the course notes folder. Please see there is no folder sorry in the general files which are there which are visible for everyone there is a video whose file is different I do not remember exactly dot avi I think it is dot avi extension file that is the folder I would strongly urge all of you to see that video. Okay. Now, let us check in this problem whether it is lumped or not biot number equal to h l c by k h is 35.3 and d by 6 that is 12.7 into 10 to the power of minus 3 by 6 upon 398. So, if we substitute this we are going to get 1.88 into 10 to the power of minus 4. So, which is very much less than 0.1. So, it is very much lumped. So, that is how we have gotten away with this problem, but what is the main intention of cooking this problem or choosing this problem is to elaborate that heat transfer coefficient can be measured this way. If you put it in a gas stove flame, there also you can measure the heat transfer coefficient. You can think of any environment, you can measure the heat transfer coefficient using this simple harmless technique. Okay. Let us move on to next problem that is problem number 20. It is little lengthier, nevertheless we will do this because we will get to understand uh, this what is the uh, usage of those series formulae. solutions formulae, yeah. formulae that is a long 20 centimeter diameter d equal to 20 centimeter cylindrical shaft made of SS 304 comes out of an oven at a uniform temperature of 600 degree Celsius that is T i is 600 degree Celsius. The shaft is then allowed to cool in an environment chamber at 200 degree Celsius, T infinity is 200 degree Celsius with an average heat transfer coefficient of 80 watts per meter, meter square degree Celsius, quite high heat transfer coefficient. So, determine the temperature at the center of the shaft that is theta naught or T naught comma T 45 minutes after the start of the cooling process that is T equal to 45 into 60. Also determine the heat transfer per unit length of the shaft during this time period K equal to 14.9 K equal to 14.9. Note this number SS 304, this is stainless steel, this is having lesser resist, lesser thermal, thermal conductivity. conductivity, CP 477 joule per kg Kelvin. Rho 7900 kg per meter cube. So, how do I go about this problem? How do I go about this problem? I think we will come back to this solution. We will take two questions and come back. By to which time you guys please try the Please problem. try this problem. Basically, it is simple analytical solution. We will show the methodology. You apply that and let us see how many of you would have completed. Yeah, Theta naught cylinder, I need to know A 1 and lambda 1, which is a function of tau. So, tau is what? What is tau? Tau is Fourier number. Fourier number is alpha, alpha t, by t by L square. L squared. Alpha is known k by rho C p and t is given 45 minutes. L squared you have to take the appropriate characteristic length for a 
this is what cylinder. So, volume by area. So, then if you substitute for that tau, if you for a given tau you are going to get lambda 1 and sorry lambda 1 and a 1 in this 22 slide. So, from that you are going to get the center line temperature. So, please do this problem, keep doing this problem while we take the questions from other centers and come back to you. Yeah, YC College Nagpur, any questions? Sir, uh, uh, what is the difference between finite and differential analysis of fluid flow? Sir, please explain with practical example. Okay. What is the? What is the the question asked is what is the difference between finite control volume analysis and the differential analysis. Okay. So, I have not brought the control volume approach problems. So, I think I will I will cook a problem in which the finite control volume approach would be solved and then also similarly how to handle it differential approach. But still I would go ahead and answer this question something like this. Now, let us say I have a pipe flow. I have a pipe flow and I know only the inlet velocity. Mm. Now, I think I will have to cook the problem and come back. It becomes difficult for me to cook the problem directly because for finite control volume approach, I need to cook a problem so that you can understand it. Whatever I will tell, it will be same as what I would have told in the morning. All that I can say is in finite control volume analysis, we do not need velocity distributions and temperature distributions and the pressure distributions. But in differential approach you are going to get all of that. So, I will cook a problem and show that in the model for you. Correct. Okay. Professor has given me an example. See, I think in our fluid mechanics lab, in a fluid mechanics lab, do you have impact of jet experiment? Do you have impact of jet experiment? Professor? Yes, sir, we do. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, you have impact of jet experiment in the yeah in the impact of jet experiment what comes out? Do we measure any velocity profile and pressure profiles? No, we just apply the jet. So, there is a jet which is hitting my plate in that what do I measure? I balance the I over I have the overhang ok professor is drawing for us in the whiteboard. So, in the impact of jet experiment I have a flat plate. and I have a jet, I have a jet hitting the plate. Now, because of the jet hitting the plate, I have to hold this back at the same position. So, I have, I balance this with balancing mechanism and measure through that balancing simple lever mechanism, I put the weight and get put the mass and get the weight. What does that give me? The total drag force experienced or the total kinetic energy which has been or the total momentum which has been transferred from the fluid to the plate. And in this experiment, we demonstrate that curved plate is better than flat plate and we say that that is why we use in Pelton turbines curved blades rather than flat plates. That is what and if we use curved plate, we show theoretically that the efficiency of transferring the kinetic energy or the momentum transfer to the plate that is mechanical energy is almost 100 percent. So, what did we do? Did we get here any velocity distribution or pressure distribution? No, this is essentially finite control volume <coughs> approach. Here we have not taken the velocity distributions at the exit of the nozzle at all. So, this is finite control volume approach. Because I have, I have just taken the control volume in this case either a flat plate or a curved blade. So, this is control volume approach. I think Professor Arun has really given a best example because we all do this experiment. I think I, we cannot cook any better example than this. I hope we have reached you. Next question. Sir, what is the significance yeah, go ahead. of frontal number? Does it help in selecting for Media. The question asked by is by one of the professors, what is the significance of Prandtl number? Does it help in 
choosing my fluid for any heat transfer application. See, for most of the times in heat transfer, the fluid choice is mostly limited by my application. Yes, in heat exchanger perhaps I have choice of fluids, but for example, electronic cooling, usually I am limited by either air or dielectric fluid, but how many uh, in regular desktop computer or laptop I cannot carry dielectric fluid, I have to manage with the air. So, the fluid is fixed there that is air, but, but for example, it is a server, it is a huge server and I have to cool the motherboards of the server, there yes they use dielectric fluid, but of course, I cannot explain this directly with Prandtl number. See all that we can say is Nusselt number is a function of Reynolds and Prandtl number. As long as the Prandtl number is equal to 1 or greater than 1, it is going to carry if it is laminar flow Prandtl number to the power of half if it is a flat plate. But in internal channels, it is going to be 0.3 in case of cooling and 0.4 in case of heating. So, definitely from that you can see that the heat transfer coefficient is directly proportional to the Prandtl number. If you increase the Prandtl number, definitely your heat transfer coefficient is going up, no doubt about that. But now let us see which all fluids have high Prandtl number. Prandtl number of air is 0.71 that is almost closer to unity. Prandtl number of water is anywhere between 6 to 13.5 around room temperature it is around 6 and as you go on increasing the uh, temperature the Prandtl number comes down sorry it comes down the Prandtl number comes down. So, it is anywhere between 3 to 6.5 with up to uh, until it becomes a steam. Now, if I take oil whose Prandtl number is very high, now can I choose oil all the time? No, why? Because the pumping power for oil is very high, why? Because the viscosity of oil is high. So, the pumping power required for oil is very high and of course, if I use oil most of the times in most of the application, it becomes messy. I may want to utmost manage with water or air, but that does not mean that I will never use oil. Most of the heat exchangers work with oil, but if I can reconcile with the fact that I can afford to have large pumping power, I will go for oil. Why? Because Prandtl number is high. If it is no matter whether it is laminar or turbulent, the heat transfer coefficient is going to increase with the increase of Prandtl number. That is the answer for your question professor. We will have low conductivity or low high conductivity fluid will have a low frontal number that is my question. No, no, okay. we should not look at k alone, it is mu C p by k together the question asked is high frontal number will have low conductivity, how can low conductivity fluid give me high heat transfer coefficient. Yeah, see the point is it is we should not look at only thermal conductivity. If we take the definition of h equal to minus k del t by del y at y equal to 0, that is the heat transfer coefficient definition. k alone is not contributing for the heat transfer coefficient, it is del t by del y which is contributing and this del t by del y at y equal to 0 is dependent on the Prandtl number. So, we should not look at it as k alone, k alone. Okay. Now that you have asked K alone, I will answer this in a little different fashion. We use nanoparticles in for liquids, nowadays lot of research is going on on these nanoparticles. So, what they do is they put carbon nanotubes or alumina that is aluminum oxide small nanoparticles they put along with the water stream. So, what happens? Belief is that the thermal conductivity will be high because I have put a solid, <coughs> solid thermal conductivity that is aluminum's thermal conductivity is 150 and water's thermal conductivity is 0 0.6. So, I should have a thermal conductivity quite high in between these two. Yes, thermal conductivity is high, but what have people seen? Hardly an increase of heat transfer coefficient by 3 to 4 percent. The point is, point is we need to look at this problem as the temperature gradient, it is not the thermal <coughs> conductivity alone. So, that is the answer for this question professor, do not look at it as k alone, 
the heat transfer coefficient is a function of Prandtl number, Prandtl number, Prandtl number. I cannot emphasize more than this. Why? Because when we there do dimensional similarity day after tomorrow, that is on Monday, from the energy equation, there are two non-dimensional numbers which are going to come, that is Reynolds and Prandtl. So, it is not k alone, it is Prandtl which is going to decide the heat transfer coefficient. Okay. We will get to the problem now, where we left problem number 20. So, the question was, yeah, the question was initial and final temperature was given and we were supposed to find the center line temperature of a circular <coughs> cylinder. So, first thing what we need to do is, we need to get the tau, tau equal to alpha t upon r naught squared. Let us find out alpha, alpha is k by rho C p, k is, k is given to be 14.9, rho is 7900, C p is 477. So, that is equal to 3.95 into 10 to the power of minus 6 meter squared per second. Now, if I substitute that in tau, it is ok. Tau equal to 3.95 into 10 to the power of minus 6 into 45 into 60, that is 45 minutes converting into seconds, 45 into 60 upon diameter is given to be 20 centimeters, so it is 0.1 whole squared because R naught. So, tau equal to 1.07. So, why are we calculating tau first of all? This is just to ensure that our first series solution is valid for tau greater than 0.2. So, first term is sufficient that is number 1. Next is, so we are not going to do this with chart, we are going to directly do with the analytical solution. So, for the analytical solution, I need to know the Biot number. So, let us calculate Biot number. What is Biot number given by H R naught by K? So, Biot number equal to H R naught by K. Yeah, here we have a general question by all the students, perhaps most of you also had got, I have got this question. That is, this is what? This is a cylinder, this is a cylinder. So, for a cylinder, the, by, uh, the characteristic length is not R naught, but remember all these relations or these solutions are derived on the basis of taking the characteristic length as R naught for cylinder and for sphere R naught and plate thickness as T. So, you do not start applying lumped thing here, it is not HLC by K, here Biot number by definition when we have derived, when, I, when we have derived the solution, it is taken as H R naught by K for both cylinder and sphere. So, this has to be kept in our mind. We should not again go back and take the characteristic length L C equal to volume by surface area, no. So, this is a word of caution, we have to be very careful. Why? Because that is how we have defined, that is all. There is no other significant reason. Okay. So, Biot number equal to H is 80. R naught is 0.1, K is 14.9. So, that is Biot number equal to 0 0.537. Okay. So, now let us go to the chart, let us go to the chart. So, the point is Analytical, no? Biot number is not 0 0.5, is 0 0.537, it is very much larger than 0 0.1. So, lumped is not going to hold water anymore. So, we have to go to the document and get A 1 and lambda 1. What is the solution? First, let us write the solution theta naught t naught minus t infinity equal to e naught minus t infinity theta naught equal to t naught minus t infinity upon t i minus t infinity is equal to A 1 e to the power of lambda 1 squared into now, we need to find a 1 and lambda 1. Where do we get this a 1 and lambda 1? We will get this as a function of Biot number. Let us go to the table and get this lambda 1 and a 1 from this table. So, that is Biot number equal to 0 0.537. Yeah, there is a 
standard question here, I do not find 0 0.537 in this table, I have 0 0.5 and 0 0.6, what, what should I do? I have to interpolate. Huh. Can I interpolate? If you strictly ask, no. Why? Because interpolation is possible only when it is linear, but here definitely it is not linear, it is <laughs> non-linear, but I have no other option. So, that is why, of course, the Biot number variation here is between 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. So, maybe piece wise it would become linear, but that, that is the assumption, it, but usually it is not very much off. So, that is the reason we interpolate, but if the student asks, can I interpolate because this is a non-linear function, we should say, yes, you are right, it is a non-linear function, but still we will go ahead and take it as interpolation, assuming that within that domain it is going to be linear. Okay? So, if I do that, I am going to get a 1 as 1.122 and lambda 1 as 0 0.97. I guess most of you would have got this. A 1 equal to? 1.122 lambda 1 equal to 0 0.97. Okay. So, if I substitute this, I would get T naught as 364 degree Celsius. In fact, for this problem, let us just do for the heck of it applying lumped capacitance. Just let us do this. Let us do this applying lumped capacitance and let us see how much the temperature would be different from this temperature what we have computed. That is, what is lumped capacitance? T naught minus T infinity upon I am just brute force applying lumped capacitance. That is T minus T infinity upon T i minus T infinity equal to e to the power of minus T by tau. Let me calculate tau. Tau equal, tau we have already calculated. Uh, no. Yeah, we have calculated. No, this tau is different. We are, unfortunately, we are using the same notation for two things. Okay, now, I realize that tau is Fourier number and also time constant. So, please do not get confused, when I say tau here in this equation, it is time constant. That is the reason most of the textbooks use for Fourier number as F O rather than tau, because tau is usually chosen for time constant. So, let us now find out time constant, yeah, that is Fourier number. What we found as alpha t by r naught square is actually Fourier number tau equal to rho v c p upon h a s. Let us calculate that, tau equal to rho v c p upon h a s. I hope we have rho v c p and all, perhaps we do not have, yeah, but still we will go ahead we and have. make some assumptions and calculate. Yeah, we have rho is 477 d by 6. That no, is, is d by 6, uh, no, not d by 6, this is cylinder. So, what will be the for R cylinder? R naught by 2, no? Phi d squared by, let us write phi, phi, phi by 4, 4 d squared l divided by phi d l. l. So, l l gets cancelled out, phi pi gets cancelled out. So, d by 4 it is, that is R by 2, that is right. Into C p is 477 and C p is, uh, sorry, rho is already told, right? Yeah. Rho V C p. Uh, I have told, for rho it is 7900 and d is 0 0.2 meters, 0 0.2 meter yeah. upon h. What is h here? 80 watts per meter square Kelvin that's and it, that's it. A s is not there. Okay. What is the tau I get? Let us calculate 7900 into 0.2 into, into 0.75 into 477 upon 80. Is that right? Hmm. So 4 is missing? Yeah, 4 is missing. 2355, 2355 I get. 2355.2 seconds. It is quite high, why? Because it is stainless steel ball, stainless steel cylinder, so it has to be high. <coughs> It is not as conductive as copper, 
Now, let us substitute that in this equation T minus that is what is T or T is what I need to find out T minus of T infinity is 200 T minus 200 we will write down right? yeah we need temperature no? yeah T minus 200 upon 600 minus 200 equal to e to the power of minus t that is t is 45 into 60 2700 or 45 into 60 divided by 2355.2 so that is 2700 divided by 2355.2 into negative sign exponential of this would fetch me 0 0.3 into 400 plus 200 how much i get 327 327.1 huh? there is a there is a question from one of the participant saying that for biot number 0 0.537 lambda 1 and a1 what we have chosen as 0 0.97 and 1.122 are wrong let's go back and check let's go to the document so what is biot number 0 0.537 and 0 0.5 it is cylinder i don't know what you our participant is saying for cylinder yes it is right 0 0.97 and 1.122 sorry we are not wrong for a change probably you are looking in the column for oh, plane, plane wall. wall okay please please see for it cylinder it appears to be 0 0.6533 that is the plane wall ah. column that is plane wall column sorry you are seeing plane wall see the cylinder, cylinder. now let us come back what did we get for lumped P. temperature temperature we got 3 That's 327 okay. we got the temperature as 327 let us take stock what are we doing we got biot number of 0.537 we said that what is the biot number we got 0.537 that is very high we cannot use lump but still we went ahead and put the lump and what is the temperature we got 327 see what is the actual temperature 364 it is a temperature difference of 364 minus 327, it is 37 degrees Celsius. So, we cannot afford to assume lumped. Now, this itself suggests that why biot number of 0.1 is so sacred, because there were so many questions in yesterday's and day before yesterday's question answer session, why biot number 0.1 only is taken. So, this is how one can check oneself whether when can I take lumped and when can I not take lumped. I think we will get back to question answer session and then solve a problem or we will yeah, problem. yeah this problem is through energy energy removal ah there is second part there is second part that is heat transfer per unit length of the shaft during this time period we will go to the document and see the relation what we need to use that is next next yeah so here for a cylinder it is q by q maximum cylinder equal to 1 minus yeah. 1 minus 2 theta cylinder let us write that that is, is theta by theta max theta by theta max theta by theta max equal to 1 minus 2 theta naught q by q max uh, q by q max so sorry q by q max q by q max i am sorry q by q max q by q max equal to 1 minus 2 theta naught j 1 lambda 1 j 1 of lambda 1 that is first order lambda 1 upon lambda 1. Now, how do I get this j 1 for lambda 1 equal to 0.97? Let us go to the document for lambda 1 equal to 0.97. Let us try to get j 1. See, if you go to Jacobian function which are listed yeah here no sorry Bessel function J1. that is 0 0.97 0 0.97 J1 is supposed to be 0 0.43 correct okay J1 equal to 0 0.43 0 0.43 minus 0 0.97 minus 0 0.43 so now let us calculate before okay we will go ahead and calculate q by q maximum q by q maximum equal to 1 minus of 2 theta naught we had just found theta naught just little while ago 
or we can find it out theta no we have found theta naught 0 0.41 0 0.41 into 0 0.43 upon 0 0.97 so what do i get I am going to get this as 0 0.636. Now, the question is to find q max, q max we know pi rho into pi r square l that is m c p, m is density into volume rho into pi r square l c p into t i minus t infinity. I have to just plug in that is 7900 into pi Yeah, 7900 into pi into 0.1 squared into 1 per meter length we are taking into 477 into 600 minus 200. So, I would get theta max a q max as 47350 kilo joules, 47350 kilo joules. If I multiply that with 0 0.636, I end up with actual heat transfer as 30,120 kilo joules. <coughs> this is the total energy. This is the answer. Okay. One thing we have learned, if we take recap of what we have learned from this problem, what is that we are carrying the message from this problem? That is, if I take lumped assumption where I am not supposed to take lumped assumption that is for biot numbers greater than 0.1, I am going to be my temperature predictions are going to be seriously in <coughs> error. Okay? So, they are not going to be right. So, I should not take the lumped assumption where I am not supposed to take it that is for biot numbers greater than 0.1. So, that is what is demonstrated through this problem. I think we will take one or two questions from two <coughs> centers before we come to convective heat transfer questions. So, we are stopping tutorial on conduction. So, we are through with conduction tutorial and we will be moving on to convection once we come back, once we come back after question answer session. So, for 5 more minutes we are taking questions from various centers. Government College Salem. Government College Salem. Sir, how is the turbulent shear stress measured? Yeah. The question asked by one of the participants is rows, how is the turbulent shear stress measured? First let us take the question, uh, first let us write what is turbulent shear stress. So, what is turbulent shear stress? Turbulent shear stress is equal to minus rho u prime v prime bar. Okay. So, there is something called what is hot wire anemometer. I will come to the principle of hot wire anemometer just a little while from now. Someone let us say gives me the velocity u versus time and v versus time. So, v versus time is something like this and v versus time is something like this let us say. Okay? So, at every instant, at every instant I would pick up u prime from here and at the same instant I would pick up v prime from here and then take the product of u prime v prime like that at every instance I would pick up and average that product over a long period of time and that is what I get u prime v prime. Then I multiply that with density and that is what is my turbulent shear stress. Now, the question is how do I measure this although very nicely I plotted it how do I get this plot that is done by what is called as hot wire anemometer. What is hot wire anemometer? Hot wire anemometer is just a thin wire, is just a thin wire. How thin that wire is? It is consisting of a small wire which is having prongs and this wire is one arm of the Wheatstone bridge. We all know Wheatstone bridge very well. So, this wire is one arm of this Wheatstone bridge. So, this is the Wheatstone bridge and we measure the voltage output from this Wheatstone bridge. So, this wire is one arm of the Wheatstone bridge. How thin is this wire? It is of the order of 15 micrometer. What is our hair diameter size? 
hair diameter size is 75 micrometer. So, 75 micrometer hair itself I cannot see until I keep that under the tube light. So, how about 15 micrometer? It is a difficult task. If you keep the hot wire to the tube light, perhaps with lot of difficulty youngsters can see, but the old people like me can definitely not see. So, 15 micrometer is the diameter of this hot wire. Why? Why it is such a small diameter? That is because again from heat transfer we can answer rho C p, rho V C p is very less. That is thermal inertia is to be less. That is why it is made very small. So, that it can respond very fast. Its response is of the order of milliseconds because it has to capture fluctuations of the order of kilohertz. So, it has to be time constant has to be of the order of milliseconds. That is the reason why it is made so small. So, this Wheatstone if when it is made part of the Wheatstone bridge, it is maintained typically at 300 or 400 degree Celsius. When I put this in flow, when I put this in flow, this hot wire gets cooled, but I will bring it back to the same temperature. What is the additional power I have to put in to bring it back to the same temperature is a measure of the velocity. That is why this is called as CTA, that is constant temperature anemometer, because I am maintaining the temperature constant. So, this is a very highly specialized equipment. There are uh, to the best of my knowledge, there are only 4 to 5 suppliers all over the world. The major suppliers are TSI and Dantec and each one, the cheapest one costs us at least 15 to 16 lakhs, but there are some cheaper versions which will cost at least 5 to 6 lakhs. So, all said and done, the coming back to your question, we measure the velocity profile using that hot wire anemometer and do the bookkeeping of U prime and V prime, take the product and average it over considerable period of time and that is how you get the turbulent shear stress. That tells us how difficult it is to get the turbulent shear stress. Now, you imagine you have to move point by point if you are doing in a flat plate, point by point not only yes. along the x direction, but also in the y direction. We have to be thankful to all those scientists who have measured this and put these values in the literature. We have to be thankful to them, but for their persistent efforts, we would not have had data of friction factor or otherwise. Okay, I think I have answered your question. Very nicely. Government College. Government College, Salem. Yes, sir. In case of uh, mixture of two fluids, different fluids, how the heat transfer coefficient H varies? Okay. The question by one of the participants is, if I have mixture of two fluids, how does the heat transfer coefficient vary? Okay. The answer is in the question itself. Why? Because now, if let us say they are immiscible, they are miscible fluids. That means, they can mix with each other. Then, if the two fluids can mix with each other, I have to imagine as a homogeneous fluid, right. which will have its own, density. its own density, its own viscosity, its own specific heat, its own thermal conductivity, that is its own thermophysical properties. Now, once I make it as a homogeneous fluid, then it becomes quite easy. Now, that is if it is miscible fluid, that is if the both the fluids can mix. I think I did not state the question for the other participants. I am sorry, the question asked by the participant was, if two different fluids flow in a pipe, for example, two different fluids if two different fluids flow in a pipe, how does the heat transfer coefficient get quantified? Yes. The answer is, if the both the fluids are miscible, that is if they can mix and form a homogeneous fluid. Now, I think all of you can understand when I say homogeneous. Homogeneous means, it is the fluid which is having properties homogeneous, that is it does not vary with location. That is density, specific heat, thermal conductivity, viscosity are all homogeneous, are all same Everywhere. for this imaginary fluid, which is a mixture of fluid A and fluid B. The, then it is almost like the same convective heat transfer what we are handling for miscible fluids, but if it is for immiscible fluids, then what is the issue here? Not only if they are density wise, they are significantly different denser one will flow at the bottom and the lighter one will flow at the top. Now, 
definitely if the density is different, naturally I am sure viscosity, specific heat, thermal conductivities are different. Yes. That means, Prandtl number of the top fluid is different from the Prandtl number of the bottom, bottom fluid. So, two issues. Boundary. So, there is a boundary layer growth differently on the top wall and boundary layer growth differently on the bottom wall. Mm. So, heat transfer coefficient on the top wall is different from the heat transfer coefficient on the bottom wall. This is a too simplistic way of looking at it actually. So, professor is drawing. So, the boundary layers are different, the way they are growing are going to be different based on the Prandtl number. But if we have to handle friction factor now, if we have to handle pressure drop, I have to take the interfacial shear stresses also. That is not just the shear stress on the top wall and the bottom wall, there is going to be a shear stress between the two fluids itself that is at the interface of these two of these two fluids will have different velocities. and both will have different velocities. So, it is going to be quite difficult to get the closed form solutions, but nevertheless it is a good question. It is only going to tell us what are all the complexities involved in this type of problem. There is so, a heat transfer from one fluid to another. Yeah. So, professor has shown that at the interface there is an heat transfer between one fluid to the another fluid as well. So, it is a quite a complicated problem, you cannot get easy closed form solution. Nevertheless, it is a good question, again an application oriented question I would say. Is that okay? Okay, sir. Yeah. Sir. Ah, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, it is uh, like a composite wall, we have to add uh, H1 and H2. No, no, no. Question is, is it like composite wall, can I add H1 and H2? No, it is not that simple, we have been telling now. See the Prandtl number is different for the top wall and the bottom wall, it is not H1 and H2. I have to take the local heat transfer coefficient, what is drawn on the paper is just two plates, but imagine a circular pipe. So, it will be heat transfer coefficient along the circumference is going to be varying all over. So, it is not simple H1 and H2. It no. is not H1 and H2. Here. Yeah. Yes. There is professor has drawn for us 1 and 2. So, H on the top wall is going to be different from the bottom wall depending on the Prandtl number difference. So, it is not H1 and H2. We cannot simplify that easily. That is why I have been telling this is a complicated question. Is that okay, professor? Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Let us take up a problem. Problem number 26. The velocity profile, it is a flow over a surface, wherein which we have been given the velocity profile and the temperature profile. Velocity profile is u of y equal to a y plus b y squared minus c y q and temperature profile T of y is equal to d plus e y plus f y squared minus g y q where A, B, C, D, E, F, G are all constants. So, now obtain expressions for skin friction factor and convective heat transfer coefficient in terms of free stream velocity and free, tempera free stream temperature <coughs> and appropriate profile coefficients and fluid properties. That is the question. Okay. So, let us go to the definition. So, here it is pretty straightforward actually, it is simple differentiation. differentiation. Let us first take up H, H equal to minus k del T by del y at y equal to 0 upon T s minus T infinity. Here the thing is we know the constants, the question here is are all constants A to G are constants and we know them, that is what is that when I know the profile. I know the constant. So, how do I get del T by del Y? If I differentiate this, I get E plus 2 F Y minus 3 G Y square. But now, D T by D Y at Y equal to 0 means the second term and the third term vanish, I end up getting only E. So, that means if I substitute this in the top, I get minus K E upon H equal to minus K E upon T S minus T infinity this is my heat transfer coefficient. Like this we can cook lot of problems and give it to our students, 
so that they understand. And in fact, this velocity profile and temperature profile are not out of the world. They are very much, they are taken polynomial that is all. So, more or less our velocity profiles and temperature profiles are not going to be this complicated, but still they are going to be, if it is laminar, they are going to be parabolic. We can still give parabolic temperature profile and sorry, uh, velocity profile and ask them to find the heat transfer coefficient. Okay. C f equal to tau s upon rho u infinity squared by 2 and what is tau s? Mu del u by del y at y equal to 0 upon rho u infinity squared by 2. So, now if I calculate del u by del y del u by del y because we know the velocity profile del u by del y equal to a plus 2 b y minus 3 c y square. So, now I want del u by del y at y equal to 0. So, the next two terms that is second two terms get cancelled out. I get del u by del y at y equal to 0 as a. So, c f equal to mu a upon 2 mu a upon or mu a upon half rho u infinity square. That is 2 mu a upon rho u infinity square. Okay. Let us take a trivial problem which is 24 that is stretching. Just to get the hang of it, we will just write what is this stretching. So, the first, the first case is problem number 24. I hope everyone would have answered this, that is what I would expect. So, if it is stretching, what is this? What is this case first of all? This case is linear deformation that is it is getting deformed in linear direction. So, I have linear deformation is del u by del x that is no, no, yeah, not yet, okay. this is del u by del x del u by del x and this is del v by del y del v by del y is that right. So, linear deformation total linear deformation is del u by del x plus del v by del y. Yeah. Del u by del x plus del v by del y. Okay. Next case, what is next case? I think it can be clearly seen, we have already solved this, but still let us do it. It is rotation. It is rotation means I should have gradients of that velocity in the other direction that is I have this is in z plane. So, that is del v by del x, this is del v by del x, del v by del x and the top one is del u by del y. No, I have made a mistake. This is correct, correct. del u by del y. Correct. Ah, del u by del y correct del u by del y because I moved from bottom to top velocity has changed. So, rotation what is the direction of del v by del x net rotation is half of actually it is half of del v by del x plus del u by del, del, u by del y this is the net rotation. So, omega it is omega z this is equal to omega z. Is this minus? Ah, plus, 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 that is right, plus. Okay. Now, let us take the last one, the angular deformation. I think, okay, we will draw them. I think this has been already answered. So, I would just state it as del v by del x plus del u by del y, that is all. So, huh? minus, minus. Ah, minus del v by del x minus no plus na minus plus. of minus no plus it is so del delta alpha plus delta beta that is my shearing strain so it is not minus so shearing strain or angular deformation equal to del v by del x plus del u by del y 
do not get confused, it is angular deformation. So, we, how much is the net angular deformation? Delta alpha and delta beta. So, del v by del x plus del u by del y is the angular deformation. I think we will stop solving tutorial problems. We will perhaps take one or two questions. Over to Amrita. Sir, actually the one of the participants uh, had a doubt uh, regarding that uh, uh, tau value in your in our uh, transient uh, heat transfer. I mean for all practical problems we say that uh, for uh, tau value or Fourier number greater than 0.2. We can use this one turn approximation uh, for that Fourier number value greater than 0.2. And uh, they have the doubt that are all the practical problems, for all the practical problems, can we use this one term approximation or Fourier number will be greater than uh, 2 or uh, can we general, can we do some generalization like that? Yeah, but question asked by one of the participants is that for Fourier number, <laughs> greater than 0.2, can I apply this for all practical problems? Yes, why not? As long as the Fourier number is greater than 0.2 and it is one dimensional transient conduction problem we, and it, no, it is varying with time, we can apply this. As long as Fourier number is greater than 0.2, one, one term solution is still valid. There is no problem. The question is, are practical problems in general having tau greater than 0.2? Are, the question asked is, are practical problems having Fourier number greater than 0.2? That cannot be answered just like that because each practical problem will have its own Fourier number. But generally, I think Fourier numbers are greater than 0.2, but I would not may, I would not dare to make that statement. So, we have to check for each practical problem what is the Fourier number ourselves. Okay, ma'am. So, we will meet back again on Monday, Monday morning sharp 9 o'clock. Energy equation. Energy equation. Thank you. With full of energy, we should be coming back.